Just a warning, there are spoilers ahead for this video. I'm going to be talking about practically everything that happened in the three seasons of Stranger Things. So if you haven't seen the latest season or the whole series at all, please watch it. I need more people to talk to who have seen this show. I'm very lonely. So recently I've been binging and re-watching the Netflix original series Stranger Things, created by the Duffer Brothers. The show is about a group of boys who find this girl named Eleven who has special powers, like telekinesis and jumping into other people's subconsciouses and shit. The main conflict in the show is that there's this world called the Upside Down, the opposite and more deadly version of our main setting, Hawkins, Indiana. So in pretty much every season, they gotta stop the evil force from taking over Hawkins, they shut the portal to the Upside Down world twice, and all the characters have their happy endings. It is a pretty entertaining show. Like I said, it's very addicting to watch and I've been re-watching it so many times. So much so that I wanted to make a video focusing on the relationship of our main protagonists, Mike Willer and Jane Eleven Hopper. Or just Elle as everyone calls her that. Even though we do learn that her real name is Jane, but she never has a scene where she tells the boys what her real name actually is, oh who cares. Focusing on these two, they have a pretty queer romantic interest in each other, which is pulled off with the help of some great writing by the staff and the Duffer brothers. Which is interesting because these two were actually socially awkward dorks in high school, kinda like like me, except I didn't get held back because of it. These two are gifted. Whenever they meet, Mike is immediately mesmerized by Elle, mainly because of her mysterious nature and behavior. She doesn't understand basic human phrases and also doesn't have good enough knowledge for human interaction. This makes Elle really interesting. You feel sorry for this girl because she doesn't quite understand the real world, but she also tries to escape this greater threat that could end up killing her. Mike is the first person she tells this to, and Mike immediately believes her, even if it sounds crazy. Crazy. The rest of the boys aren't really impressed by Elle's story at first, until they learn that she has superpowers, pretty much. The other two boys, Dustin and Lucas, are skeptical at first. However, Mike is often the instigator trying to do things with Eleven that can probably help her, even spending most of his time talking to her instead of his friends. This eventually leads to Lucas snapping at Mike over Elle, even accusing him of just liking her, which he denies, for now. I really like the writing of this show because the dialogue feels so natural, and you do feel for the characters whenever they're given the short end of the stick. The argument between Lucas and Mike over Eleven felt so genuine, and the show does a clever U-turn where it makes Elle out to be a bad person because because she ended up hurting Lucas. So after separating, reuniting, and reconciling, the boys and Elle put together a plan to fight off the Demet Gorgon, the main baddie in Season 1 who becomes way more prominent in Season 2. While this is going on, Elle and Mike share a moment together that pretty much confirms that Mike likes her. Why? <laughs> Mike, you sly dog. This seems like it's gonna go well, but then the Demogorgon corners the boys in L, which leads to Eleven sacrificing herself to defeat the Demogorgon, saving Mike and the boys. That's pretty much where this relationship arc ends for season 1. Without the later seasons in mind, this is still a genuinely sad ending for the show to have. It almost seems like Mike and Elle were finally gonna end up together, but she vanishes and Mike assumes she's totally gone. Except, not really. From the first episode of Season 2, Mike is constantly calling Eleven daily with his walkie-talkie, hoping she'll respond one day. But she can't respond because she's dead, right? Nope. Turns out Elle survived the attack on the Demogorgon and made her way back to Hawkins using a gateway formed in the Hawkins Middle School. She ends up on the run for a while until she's found by Jim Hopper, the town sheriff. So Elle spends most of Season 2 locked in Hopper's cabin in the middle of the woods. This sounds bad, but Hopper claims he's doing this to keep her safe from the bad men. So he has good intentions. This was also a pretty interesting direction to take Elle's character arc in Season 2. Hopper and Eleven barely shared any interactions in Season 1. So for Season 2 to develop this father-daughter relationship was really fascinating and a good place for the show to go. Plus, knowing that Hopper lost his real daughter to cancer in the last season, you can also make that he's protecting Eleven because she's probably his second chance at being a father again. How sweet. Also, in the course of almost a year, Elle's hair grew out. Aww. So like I said, Elle spends most of her time in Season 2 just locked in Hopper's cabin. But she does use her powers to visit Mike, who's been calling for her every day like I mentioned earlier. She desperately wants to see him again, even walking out the cabin despite Hopper telling her not to. We get a sweet scene of her finding Mike, but he's spending time with Max, the new girl in the boys group. Elle gets a little jealous, so she forces Max's skateboard off her feet. Then when Max describes how her skateboard was pulled away from her like a magnet, Mike immediately thinks it's Eleven. It's 
it's pretty frustrating to see these two just miss each other passing by in the school's hallways. You just want to see these two get together again since a lot was left off in the first season. So after a subplot where Elle finds her sister who also has superpowers, yeah this doesn't exactly go anywhere and we never see these characters again in season 3, we finally see these two reunite and embrace each other. Complete with Mike yelling at Hopper for hiding Eleven. Fun. After saving the world, again, the boys and Max attend the snowball. Snowball? It's this cheesy school dance where you go in the gym and dance to music and stuff. We first heard about the snowball in that clip from season 1, but we never actually got to see it until season 2's finale. It also feels gratifying to see it finally happen. What's also gratifying is seeing Eleven arrive in a pretty cute dress just to dance with Mike, leading to the two kissing again. Aww. This leads us to season 3, which opens with... Oh my god, slow down season 3, we just started, Jesus. Yeah, this season doesn't really dance around the subject. These two are finally dating. Until this happens. I dump your ass. What the fuck? Okay, season 3 is my favorite season, but this plot point is like the only part that I didn't like too much. Then again, it does make their reunion in the finale way more satisfying to see. So I guess those Duffer brothers did have a pretty good thing going here. Plus, season 3's finale is probably my favorite episode in the whole series. Mike and Elle's relationship is the most interesting part of the series. Well, to me at least. I like the first scenes with these two because Mike is just showing her all this stuff in his house and all his toys and shit. It's really sweet, and Eleven just sort of sits there confused, but never really tells Mike that she's not interested. This is one likable aspect about Elle immediately, how incredibly innocent her character is. She doesn't talk too much at first, but Mike helps her open up by just talking to her about things. I really love the chemistry between these two, uh, two. That can definitely be credited to Mike and Elle's actors, Finn Wolfhard and Millie Bobby Brown. These two do such an amazing job together and really help the relationship between Mike and Elle feel more real. One thing that's noticeable is that Mike is incredibly protective of Elle, to a point where we often see Mike complaining about Elle using her powers for everyone's benefit. This isn't because he's trying to control her, but it's because he's genuinely worried about Eleven getting seriously hurt from trying to reach a certain person, like brain damage and stuff. I mean, it does make sense. Every time L uses her powers, her nose starts to bleed, so there's clearly something inside of her head that's putting a lot of pressure on her. So when bad things do happen to her, it must seem nauseating for Mike to handle. He constantly says that he doesn't want to lose her again, so he's really paranoid about L just disappearing again like she did in the first season. And all of that can really be summed up with this clip from season 3. I don't want her to die looking for the flit when they've obviously vanished off the face of the earth, so can we please just come up with a new plan because I love her and I can't lose her again. Mike's in love. I often find myself just skipping over other scenes just to see the Mike and Elle bits since they're so great. Mike and Elle are definitely a couple I really love seeing together. Nothing can really separate these two. They're just about perfect for each other, and that's honestly great. Except it isn't. Did you miss the point of this video after reading the title? I have a game-breaking theory that severely underlines this entire show's idea of relationships. Mike Wheeler is a psychopath. Think about it. Elle has killed people, not just hurt, killed. She's had to have killed at least 15 people in this show, probably more. She's a murdering monster. Now the first two people we see her kill, sure, Mike wasn't there. How could he have known about this? However, she kills like six more people in season one's finale and in front of the boys. Mike has seen her kill people and he still loves her? He loves this killing machine? She's a murderer. She does so many awful things. She spies on people when they're not aware. She insults people who mean absolutely nothing to her. Mouth breather. She even breaks this kid's arm. Jesus, what's wrong with her? She could have easily snapped that kid's neck if she wanted to. He got off lucky. I'm the monster. No, no, Elle, you're not the monster. Of course she's not to you, you fucking psychopath. You see what I mean by Mike being completely oblivious to how Elle is a murderer? She throws a fucking car at like six people. She killed more people in front of Mike. And he still loves her. Excuse me? How could you suck face with this monster? Nobody wants to know you now. 
Hey, this seems pretty funny, but remember about two years ago when L killed people in front of you? You know what this relationship reminds me of? You remember that crazy chick who married Charles Manson? A completely psychopathic killer? She loved a monster. Maybe this is what the Duffer Brothers truly wanted to represent. What if this show is a social commentary on toxic relationships and the effects they can have on the human psyche? Oh my god, I cracked the code. Mike is the crazy lady, and L is Charles Manson. The clues were right here, and it was so obvious. I can't believe how awful this show is. It's so horrifically violent. It features horrible characters that instigate Elle's horrible actions. Yeah, you heard that right. Mike's friends are instigating Elle for murdering people. They think it's the coolest shit. These characters are terrible people. How could anyone like this show when it teaches such bad messages that children are going to be hypnotized into believing? Why are the Duffer Brothers trying to corrupt our youth? Just when you think violent video games weren't enough, Stranger Things comes along teaching bad morals and that toxicity in friend groups is an okay thing. That is terrible! This is horrible! I... What the fuck did this video turn into? Yeah, I think I should stop right now. Go watch Stranger Things.